This session is brought to you by Zurich Life and Investments. These guys are one of the last true independent life insurers going around and they're Swiss, so you know their stuff is solid. These guys really understand and believe in the value of advice, which is why they invest in programs like this one and partner with groups like XY Advisor to help drive the positive evolution of financial advice in Australia. Their team are just really good people as well. So if you haven't already connected with them to learn more, check out their website or speak to your business development contact. This session is also brought to you by Sun Super. They're one of the fastest growing profit for members or industry funds in Australia. They were the very first of these funds to partner with advisors and they've got functionality where you can actually link to your client's Sun Super accounts and charge advice fees through the fund as well as a number of uh, tech innovations to make it easier for you to work with your clients. They've got great investments, they're really, really cheap and their team are just generally legends. So if you haven't already connected with Sun Super, give them a shout because they're doing some really cool stuff. So firstly, got to say uh, to everybody listening uh, that uh, you need to thank me in advance. The The reason that uh, <laughs> I'm talking to Clay here today is because he threatened to do a show by himself. A monologue. Yep. A monologue. Just, just your ears, Clayton Daniel. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> so you're welcome. Uh, well, uh, I appreciate the, the vote of confidence here. Um, but I guess even to that... Um, XY Advisor was kicked out, well, kicked off, I should say, out of that distrust that we had of our own abilities to pick everything up at once, right? So in the same way that uh, you don't rely on me to be able to handle this, you didn't rely <laughs> on me to be able to start my own business. So you had to get me up to speed all these years later. Um, it, it, it's gone from me to you to... 1500 people at this stage. I thought you were going to say XY Advisor was born out of you just talking to yourself in a dark room, <laughs> <laughs> which it potentially was. It, d yeah, the, the, there's, a, there's a very good point. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, the, yeah. Uh, yeah. Blogging under XY Advisor, it certainly was me just talking to myself. <laughs> that is probably the best way to put it. <laughs> so, what's been happening, man? Uh, yeah. So, um, I guess in a lot of ways, XY Advisor is, I don't know if you find this, but but it is the sanity check, I think, for um, for myself to know where I'm headed and then where the rest of the financial service industry is headed. Do you know um, where you're headed? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, does the industry know where it's headed? <laughs> touché, touché. Touché. And, and because it's such a flux, right? Because we don't know, because the industry as itself, uh, I mean, we've got some guests up coming on this podcast, um, Fred, who's the founder of finder.com.au and also .com now, um, you know, that is a direct to market, which gets, I believe, half a million views per month. Wow. Massive, right? So clearly there's, um, there's a desire and a need for direct consumer financial education. Uh, and it's very topical and it's very, um, it's very transactional and yet check the need, like the, 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 mm. the desire for it is insane. And we don't know what advice is going to look like in a handful of years. Right. So I, I love listening to what people's opinions are. Um, for people that have been in the industry for 30 years down to the person who's, you know, just started. Mm. It's a very interesting insight into the the minds, the concerns of other advisors. And I think that collective uh, is the best thing that exists to know where financial, is, financial advice is going. Mm. And so... When, when you ask, you know, how, how's it going? I pay a lot of attention to that group and it's great to be a part of purely, purely to keep my finger on the pulse of where I think financial advice is headed. Um, cause even though I don't have an advice business at the moment, I'm obviously still very involved in it and I will again in the future. And it's very interesting to see, 
you know, businesses like yours, um, the newer style of businesses, the businesses that were started without purchasing, um, and, and there's a handful of them now, uh, and they're becoming more and more popular, and that's kind of looking like where advice is headed. But who knows? It, it, it someone might come out with, uh, as we we're talking about with um, Stu Bell about Remit City. And oh, yeah. And he's just well, got... Well, you put me onto him, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah, and he he's just got course after course after course after course after course. And it, and financial advice is super about financial education. And then, well, how do you do that well? How do you do that with scale? Uh, you know, and, and, and we're doing this now with the XY University. Uh, but I still really want to see if things keep heading down this super high touch um, or if it comes back out and goes super low touch or if it's a combination. Mm. Um, man, I, I'm pretty excited to see where it goes. Yeah, I think like the the fact that there is so much interest from people on the consumer side, uh, it, it comes from the fact that the people are, are sort of, they don't know where to turn. They, 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 they know that they, they, they sort of don't know what they don't know as well. So you see all these people seeking out this information. They don't know that they can turn to an advisor. And I think the tide on that is slowly changing, which is awesome to see, but they still not don't know what an advisor can do or how it can help. So they're, they're, they're searching, they're searching this stuff out, but I know you probably saw this in, in your business and I see it all the time that people often end up more confused after searching for it than they did before they started. And, you know, I've read a lot about this, the analysis paralysis, information overload, all of that sort of stuff. It's sort of hard to know where to turn to. And, um, yeah, I think that, I think in terms of the business models, it is, it's interesting just watching it all happen. It's great to be a part of it as well, but, you know, you're just seeing the, the businesses sort of diverge a bit. And I think that that will continue over time. You'll, you'll still have the high touch. I think people want that. People like the human contact, but, being used with leveraging automation and automating um, or robo whatever uh, to, to, to make it less time consuming to deliver the high touch, the human stuff, but then have the lower touch, the self-education, the DIY stuff. And I think you probably see quite a, quite a gap in the middle from, from what I can see because it's getting harder to, uh, to, be, to provide human tailoring with, with, uh, on, on any sort of... Um, profitable service with without yeah having having that uh technology sort of element or doing it in a profitable way yeah there's i think personally i have a belief and i've taken a position and 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 it's come from you know doing courses like keep keep person of influence and things like that in uh people everyone and and it's it's a, it's a platitude but everyone's different and but we can kind of group people into two different camps. One, they're happy to do things by themselves. And the other, they want someone to do that, do it for them. And mm. then you can, you can sort of then cut that down and sort of somewhere in, in, in the middle there, there's almost, they want someone to do it with. Mm. So you've kind of got this, do it for me, do it with me. And then I just want to do it myself. And I think no matter what happens, you're never going to get that, clientele that wants to do it themselves. I mean, I certainly came across these people who would come in, uh, learn about what it is that I do, even present the advice. Um, and they just didn't want it implemented. They're like, thanks. <laughs> you know, here's your upfront advice fee, but I'm now going to go do this myself. Yeah. Um, and so th you're just never going to get those clients. And then there's definitely a massive portion of people that want to do it with someone. And we don't really know what that looks like yet from an advice point of view. So we've got this direct to market, finder.com. Um, we've got this high touch, do it for me. And I'm, I'm, I would be that person, right? Mm. Yeah, I, I would definitely be the person who just do it for me. Like, I don't want to think about it. But it is enjoyable for a pretty large portion of society who who would like to do it with someone. And I think maybe people like Adele um, are doing that the most accurate at the moment, that mm. do it with me. So she's got that Facebook group and she's, she's educating. So she's not just doing that, um, 
you know, go online and find that transactional need met. Um, but she's sort of doing that with, mm. I'm really interested and I've got a, I've got a position that those, those people have been largely ignored. And I think there's a lot of money to be made there. So there's a lot of value to receive and there's a lot of value to deliver and there's really no one playing in that space at the moment. Yeah. Well, I think though that part of the, 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 even the do it for you is almost do it with you to a certain degree as well. Like you can do, like I try to do everything I can for our clients in the business, but there's still, you've got to, you've got to do it. You, you know, you've got to get them involved for them to be able to do, get the outcomes. They've got to give you the information. They've got to, even when we do the full implementation setup for clients, like they've still got to do some stuff. They've got to link up their accounts. They've got to move money around, like, got to got to switch things over so i don't know in financial advice if there is a full do it for you service for for like um comprehensive advice just investment you can give someone 100 grand they can go and invest it that's easy enough but Mm. for full full financial planning you sort of have to have that level of do it with you um to a degree and i think that you're right that it is a massive market because for young people in particular, and obviously that's where the opportunity lies longer term from a planning perspective, that all of like all of the people that I work with, they want to make smart decisions, but they want to understand the decisions that they're making so that they can then, they can get comfortable in them. And I could go and build, I know, you know, 80% of the time when I sit down with a client, I know what, to, what their financial plan's going to look like, but we spend hours and hours and do like a four hour strategy session to educate them on the options so that they feel empowered. They feel like they've made their own choice, even though it's the same choice that I knew that they were going to make in the end, I could say, there's your plan, but it wouldn't have anywhere near the same impact as saying, these are all the bits. What do you think? Okay. Oh yeah. You like that. Good. You know, money is good. (laughs) (laughs) Isn't that interesting? Okay. There, you know, Let's take that off and move on to the next thing. It's pretty impressive though because typical financial advice and, and I was that. I, I was definitely a, um, someone that wasn't focused on the journey as much as I could have been and should have been. Um, as we've t- talked about, my, my outcomes are, are, are something that I you know like to um, – I'm very proud of but the, the journey I was – I was never really much of a, of a that, that sort of – that Sherpa, you mm. know. Um, so I'm, it's, it's always great to hear, you know, the, the level of detail and, um, customization that people like yourself are, are putting in that, and that a lot of advisors these days are, um, what do you reckon? Do you reckon, um, the future is more people getting financial advice or less? I think it de- would depend on how you define financial advice. Mm. I think it would probably be less getting full financial advice but I think like I caught up with a, with a company the other day and they're not even in financial services but have a huge audience and a, a basically in the technology space and they're looking to revolutionize the way that uh, digital products are provided so or, or financial products are provided digitally um, because th- that's something where financial services sucks at products like they it's terrible you know like the generally speaking in terms of how it works and the practicalities of establishing products Mm. there's no one really doing it amazingly i don't think you know we when i work with clients and i'm working with younger guys we got online uh fact finds and it feeds into a you know salesforce based system and automated documents and emails and reminders and online calendars and all of this stuff that everyone can do from any device that they've got but when it comes time for, to present that SOA, I've got like a stack of documents, a one inch thick to open up a bunch of bank accounts and an investment account and a super fund and, you know, all of the things that go alongside it. The product guys are still not keeping up. Even the ones that some of them are moving to online signatures or digital signatures and stuff, but they're still not there. There's still a ton of, uh, of paper that comes out the back of it. And I think... Well, but, is it their fault though, or is it the legislation requirements? No, nah, definitely their fault. I'm really, blame, blame them completely. Well, why? Why? Why do you need? Why do you need it? Um, you know, I think you need. I mean, I'm pretty sure you need, like legal requirements to produce a PDS, for example, right? Oh yeah, but you can yeah. deliver a PDS digitally. I'm talking about a sure. bank bank application form. Um, uh, oh, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, a, can you open up a Commonwealth bank account from your app now? You can. 
yeah, okay. you, you can there. But like for, for like advisor to consumer products. Yeah. Oh, for advisor to consumer products. Yeah. Got you. So you can't, you know, the, the, it's just not... Uh, it's just not e- easy and it's not as easy as it, as it could be. Yeah. Um, and yeah, there are some things like oh, you can open a bank account on an app. It's also my bank with CBA. It's, it's super easy to, to do that. Yeah. But uh, I think when it comes to other products, you could, you could revolutionize the delivery of those products um, and build in some educational elements to give people a far superior outcome to, to what they're getting at the moment because it's like there's all these things for, to help people f- sort of figure out what they want uh, or what they need or what they should have and then there's like products that can make it happen but if you could integrate those two things. Yeah, I, get, I guess, I mean, those very big uh, and successful financial services companies I, I definitely find it harder to, to pivot. Um, Compared to an advisor, I think an advisor, mm. you know, you, you, you got a couple of people, you're small, you can just make things efficient, but it, it is it is a little bit hard for them. And I guess up until someone um, or a company or, or a system replaces that, maybe it's the blockchain. I I, I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I think it's going to be pretty stock. But uh, on CBA for banking, right? How's this? Uh, did you start off with a Dolomite account? Yeah. Yeah, I've been with them 30, 30 years. Right? Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, that The Dolomite program was just recently valued by, you know, uh, one of these sort of management consultants. And it was worth billions yeah. to, to, to Commonwealth Bank. And they've always, the <laughs> funny thing is they say it costs them money, right, to run. But uh, the reality is that due to these um, cartoon characters that we as children coloured in in a colouring in book. Yeah, the Dolomite Man. The Dolomite um, Man. Yeah. And then you had your sort of hologram ruler. Oh, yeah. Right? That, was, that was sweet. That all was of, sweet gear. Oh, man. All of these things. Pencil case as well. Yes. Yeah. Leads, leads to, I mean, even people that work in financial services, we're s- stuck yeah. there, you know. Yeah. And, and I've, I've gone off to Westpac at certain points, at uh, ANZ, certain points, NAB. I have uh, banked with you know, a BOQ specialist bank, which is, you know, where we call up and then they know who you are before you even pick up. You don't have to wait at all. And and yet I keep coming back to call. Yeah. It's absolutely ridiculous. That's weird. Well, they got, in, they got in trouble recently, right, for, uh, for the kickbacks to, yeah. to all the schools and the effective commission payments and Correct. Uh, legacy payments. So. Yeah. Watch this space. It's uh... yeah, Commonwealth Bank going going through the uh, going through a little bit of well, quite a bit of fire, I guess, especially with the um, that Senate laundering, inquiry. that money laundering. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that wow, you know, that's pretty big. Yeah, lucky lucky they've got their billions to uh, fall back know, on. Keep keep, <laughs> keep them happy at night. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It is it is weird that um, so I'm you know, doing, doing some content creation for, for financial services as you do. Um, and do you know how much is in our pension system? Billions, billions and billions. Well, so in superannuation in total. Oh, trillions maybe. Yeah, trillions. it's 2.5 trillion. And do you know where that ranks on a global level? I think we'd be, we'd be first or second or something. Right? We're number two. Yeah. We're, America is number one. Yeah. And Australia is the second largest pension uh, fund, you know, in the world. Yeah. Absolutely um, insane. And we'll probably take them over, right? The, the, At the rate the that US. we're going. Yeah. Yeah, sure. which is insanity, right? Absolute insanity. I mean, a big part of that is also the future fund, right, which is sort of put aside for, for um, state and, and federal employees. But a lot of – about half of that is in um, retail and super funds. Private stuff. Yeah. yeah crazy. Big opportunity. Big opportunity in that super fund market, Clay. Mate, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we had some some uh, good conversations on the group this week. Yeah, man. Um, this week was the first time that we ever uh, eclipsed a 1,000 people going into the group in one day. Wow. Yeah. So uh, that was a big thing. And then – Literally the the next four days, uh, so out of five days, so we hit a thousand day one, a thousand day two, 
950 day three and then a thousand and then a thousand. So four out of five days in a row, the group has had a thousand people on there, which it, to me is um, so fulfilling to know that all the time that we've put into this is actually... People are getting benefit. People are, yeah, you know, get, getting something out of it. To me, that is uh, really, really valuable. I just think it's amazing that, uh, you know, they, t- they talk about, uh, you know, advice c- gets a bad name from time to time, uh, but, but then you've got people that are, that are so dedicated to be constantly, and we see so many awesome people in that group just jumping in and like helping other people out and, you know, mm. tr- adding to, d- to discussions to, to just help everyone uh, live together. And, mm. you know, I think, I think that's amazing to just to see everyone uh, so committed to, I suppose, pushing it, pushing our profession forward. Definitely. But there's no other, uh, we've, we've got, I mean, the, the advice industry has a lot of people speaking on, on our behalf, but uh, this is actual just advisors comparing notes. And uh, for example, the, the education, the education yeah. topic, right? Yeah, that's a hot one. Yeah. Really few, uh, few upset people, quite a few, in fact. Yeah. I thought it was funny we were chatting before and saying like, obviously there's a lot of uh, stuff that, that's uh, that's behind the, the education requirements. And to be honest, I haven't paid it heaps of attention uh, in the past. I've got, you know, I've got a bachelor degree and two master's degrees. So I just sort of figured like, I'll be fine. One of them's a, a master's of financial planning. <laughs> I should be, I should be, li- I should be covered, right? I should be licensed. To, you have a master's to, of financial planning. Yeah. I should squeeze through. Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, and so, it's, so I was chatting to someone the other day, and uh, in a, actually in our X Y Mastermind group, and the the boys were talking about it, and uh, I thought, oh yeah, I'll just uh, they, they were talking about there's not many things on this list, and I thought I'll just go have a look on the list. Not on the list. <laughs> <laughs> Might be retiring early by the looks. Um, what, you know, what, what do you need? Honestly, I don't know. You'd think a that master's that, yeah. of financial planning. You've also got a master's in taxation, right? Also, business law, business taxation, law, right? yeah. And taxation. Um, what about that? Does that get you through? No, nah. no, not even close. Um, none of, none of those sort of specialist degrees are on there. So CFP or FCHFP? Uh, no, <clears throat> I've got a, I've got sort of half of each of those, but, uh, when I started my business, I, I uh, sort of had to focus a bit more on the practicality, making sure my business uh, actually worked. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've been heavy on that that education, and but, but there's been talk that it, it it even those aren't enough, right? Yeah, that's what they're talking about. You know, I think that there's a lot of people that are that are unhappy with the uh, with the way that this whole uh, thing has been handled from you know um lobby bodies and the and the associations in particular i know that those guys are copping a lot of heat uh it sounds like i know that the guys are working hard at it um but i i suppose a lot of people do see those associations as there and i know for for me like i think it's important to um, to be a member of this, the associations yeah, to totally. provide the support because they are the people that sort of lobby to absolutely to get the, yeah. to get the things that they want. And Definitely. I, I know that they they want there to be a realistic outcome. I, I I don't fully understand why it's it's come to a position that that seems to just not really make sense. Um, but I do it, I do know that it's not finalised yet. That there mm. that, that some changes will still happen and yeah. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, common sense prevails. Yeah, because you would assume that, uh, yeah, that these industry education standards would be enough, um, and especially ones like yours. So, yeah. so if you go back, you know, to if if someone picked up their, say, um, CFP, you know, back when they were, this is what I've been told were handed out in cereal boxes. Now, 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 now I, 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 got to, I, got, I got told that joke by, by a, an older advisor who, who had his for 20 years. But he, he certainly did say that it wasn't as difficult for him um, as it is now. So potentially, if there's a perceived problem, it is because of that, maybe. I'm just mm. taking a stab in the dark, right? I just think it's so Who's weird. Who's making that- these decisions anyway? The, is it the, Fas, the 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 Fazia board? And who are they? I don't, don't know, know, man. Some people. 
the yeah. board. It's the they've got uh, yeah, it's definitely people. May I? I think it's crazy. They're representatives from. I, I know that the the higher education providers are on there, and I, I think there's representation from. Uh, I know the AFA, the AFA and FPA guys as well. Maybe so. it's just Kaplan. <laughs> well, you th- my degree, my one of my masters is with Kaplan. Yeah. So if it is, you think that they'd be agitating to get me <laughs> on the list? Could you imagine it's just Kaplan? And they're like, nah, nothing else qualifies. <laughs> yeah, just Kaplan. Everybody's out. <laughs> But one of the things that I thought was really weird about that that conversation is that they they're penalising degrees that are more than like five or ten years like done done prior, right? Which, which I think like okay, yeah, I, I sort of get I sort of get that in uh, in theory, but really like if you like I f- finished my my bachelor degree now uh, eight years ago, my master's about five, but like if it was if these standards were coming in in ten years time or fifteen years time. Yeah, okay, like the technical side is is updated, but we've got all this CPD that we need to do to keep up to date on the technical side. And, Absolutely. you know, you're working in your business and you've arguably 15 years of pa- practical experience in your market is is much more valuable than, a, than a, you know, a bachelor's degree five years prior. And I know that even when I, I did my bachelor degree and, and studied commerce and economics and finance, but I, I use very little of that. I mm. use the the fundamentals of economics and and those and financial markets, but demand and supply, demand and supply, yeah, yeah. Um, all of that sort of stuff. But that, but that didn't equip me to be able to provide financial advice for people. Granted, in my bachelor degree, I didn't study financial planning specific subjects, mm. but does that it... shows. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, here we are. Here we are, Clay. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, I just think uh, that that's that's strange. If you've been working all of this time, that uh, you know, it, it, it matters that you've got a degree ten years ago. Like, uh, yeah. So I feel like they've got their work cut out with them. I don't know what the answer is. Um, yeah, it's uh, what do we do? You know, it can, is there anything that advisors can do? I, I haven't could, kept up to date with uh, this education stuff at all. We could revolt. <laughs> <laughs> join the join the train workers and just go on strike. <laughs> Investments not managed. <laughs> Imagine we could get matching t shirts. I think I heard the train drivers did that, <laughs> and then they got told they weren't allowed to wear the t shirts. Could you imagine <laughs> the Australian public? And in breaking news, financial planners have uh, <laughs> gone on strike <laughs> and started wearing strange t shirts. And every everyone's just gone good. <laughs> <laughs> Oh uh, yes, that would that would absolutely happen. Yeah, I think it's just uh, um, you know speak to speak to your association, speak to your dealer groups, the licensees, because really they're the ones that are pushing the conversation up the food chain mm. uh, and 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 getting to the ears of the people. I I know for sure that uh, that both the AFA and the FPA they love getting submissions and and, and emails and stuff, and uh, it doesn't need to be. That they don't need it to be a formal thing. I think that puts a lot of people off. Um, that they think that it needs to be like a legalistic, like a full on right um, submission type thing. You just email them. Just email them with some bullet points. You know, this sucks because X, Y, Z. Don't say that, but you know, like mm. it can be. It can be an informal uh, letter voicing your concerns because it's all of those things. You know, you get these politicians making decisions, but they're disconnected from what's actually happening in the in the industry and on the ground and with clients and. Um, it's the weight of support behind these things that actually uh, gives them. If they can see that there's there's a lot of people that are upset with the decisions that are being made, then they then they reconsider the decisions. And at the end of the day, politicians are generally elected, um, so they they want to be supporting the people that you know elect them. And 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 sometimes there's, there's a lot of people that, like I said, I know the association guys are keen to get to a sensible outcome, but if they don't have the concrete uh support that they can demonstrate then it makes it harder to get to that position so yeah man so yeah. you're saying reach out to your local member no oh well you could you could do it to your member you could do it to the associations you can do it to um to the licensees what i was saying though is just i know that the the uh the associations are very receptive to that and and, and right. i think that they they know all the people to that you should send it to. I know that sometimes they like re in with some of the recent changes, they were, they were saying to send it to members, but I think those guys are probably the, the best bet because they love getting the feedback yeah. and they know the best, the best channel for that. So I'd start there. Well, maybe something that's X, that XY should do is, is come up with 
what where advisors should go to if they have concerns. Because the last thing we want is for no one to be able to make it through with their degrees and everyone is just all of a sudden, you know, non-qualified or unqualified, I should say, to keep providing advice, which would be a a horrible outcome. Yep, for sure. Well, we can definitely get the answer to that. So uh, check the show notes and and the link with yep. this and, and there'll be uh, some directions on what to do to voice your concerns. Yeah, definitely. All right, mate. Well, thank you for uh, rescuing not only myself but our audience yeah. from, a, from a monologue, uh, uh, you know. So, uh, yeah, mate, that's everything. Peace out. Cheers, guys.